Good day grade 12s, welcome to week 20 and we're still doing analytical geometry but in this lesson we're going to do a general overview. So we're going to do a fairly long and established question basically doing and using everything we've learned in, or well, almost everything we've learned in analytical geometry just to give you a very good idea of what would be a good question. So it says the line with the equation y is equal to x plus 2 intersects a circle defined by x squared plus y squared equals 20. So before we do anything else I'm going to draw a little very rough diagram you know my drawings they're pretty bad so let's do it it says that it's x squared plus y squared equals 20 the square root of 20 is about 4.5 so we know that this is circuited on the origin because there's no other numbers yet and we also know that it's going through about 4.45 so let's just mark that off there and go around Okay, almost good until that part there. Okay, so that's about 4.5, more or less, 4.5. To be more accurate, it would be negative square root of 20, negative square root of 20. And that would be the square root of 20, and that would be the square root of 20. Okay, we also know there's a line, which is y equals x plus 2. So it's going to be going through positive 2 over here. And since it's got a gradient of 1, it's going to be going through 2 over here. So we've got a line going through like that. Okay. And that is going to be y equals x plus 2. Right. Now that I can picture what we've got, let's see what the equations are. So the first question is determine the coordinates of A and B, which are obviously the points where these two cut. So how do we do this? We need to realize that we can actually simultaneously equate them. We have to because how do you find where two lines cut? We actually have to let something be equal to another thing here. So we've got that x squared plus y squared is equal to 20 but we also have that y is equal to x plus 2. So what I'm going to do is substitute this x plus 2 into the y value. So therefore I'm going to have x squared plus x plus 2 all squared is equal to 20. So therefore we've got x squared plus x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 20. So now if we multiply that out and add it up we've got 2x squared plus 4x plus 4 minus 20. I was getting ahead of myself there. So therefore we've got 2x squared plus 4x minus 16 equals 0 and you see that there's a common factor of 2 so we can go x squared plus 2x minus 8 okay now factors are 8 of 4 and 2 which is great because then we can say okay fine we want a plus and a minus 2 equals naught. Therefore our x is either minus 4 or x equals 2. So in other words if I had to do this in another color the x value at that point there of a is going to be minus 4 and the x value of 2 of b is going to be 2. Now we need to find the y. So to get the y we can either substitute back into the circle or which would be much more sense, make much more sense, we're going to substitute into the straight line. So therefore we've got y is going to be minus 4 plus 2 which is minus 2 so therefore that point there is minus 2 or y is equal to 2 plus 2 which equals 4 and therefore that point there is 4. Awesome. Let's see what else they've got for us. Now it says determine the length of chord AB. Determine the length of chord AB. So I'm going to change color and we'll go to, so let's do this as interesting color. We want the length. Now remember the length formula. All these formula are on your formula sheet but back in the day, the dark ages when I was at school we actually had to learn all these formula so luckily I do have them in my head and the length formula remember is exactly the same as Pythagoras so that length is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 all squared plus y2 minus y1 
all squared. So now all we have to do is substitute these two points in to find the length of this. Okay, so let's do that. We're going to go length is equal to, and I'm going to call B.2 and A.1 just because I can. That becomes square root x2, which is 2 minus minus 4 bracket squared plus and then it becomes 4 minus minus 2 all squared which equals the square root of 2 plus 4 squared plus this becomes 4 plus 2 as well 4 plus 2 squared which becomes the square root of 2 plus 4 is 6 so it's 6 squared plus 6 squared which is the square root of 36 plus 36 which is square root of 72. Now usually that is a good enough answer for us but just in case you are wondering that becomes 8.49 so that is effectively 8.49 units but you can leave it in third form unless they tell you otherwise. Right, so now we know the length of this. So the length of chord AB, length, just in case we need it later, is going to be the square root of 72. Let's see what else they're asking us to do. Ooh, they said determine the coordinates of M, the midpoint of AB. And at this point, I think I need to raise my length, just my length equation. So let's go raise the length equation just so that we can see what they're actually asking us. So what are they saying? They want us to find M, the midpoint of this line. Well, that's easy. The midpoint equation M is just what? It is just x1 plus x2 all over 2 times by y, sorry, not times, by the second point is y1 plus y2 over 2. So therefore it becomes, the first one is minus 4 plus 2 all over 2 and this becomes minus 2 plus 4 all over 2. So therefore the midpoint of this is going to be minus 4 plus 2 is minus 2, minus 2 divided by 2 is minus 1 and minus 2 plus 4 is 2 and 2 divided by 2 is 1. So therefore that point there M, and I'm going to point to it because I'm running out of space in my little drawing, is going to be minus 1. 1. Excellent. Next. It was next. Now they will say show that OM, where O is the center of the circle, is perpendicular to AB. Okay, so we need to show that OM is perpendicular to AB. So to find that they're perpendicular, what do we need? We need their gradients. And at this point, I'm thinking I need to raise some of my working. So let's get rid of this. Okay. In fact, I'm going to get rid of all my working except my circle with all my information in just in case I need that. Well obviously we need it. And also I'm not going to raise my in information at the top there about the length of AB just in case I need that as well. Right, so what do we know about perpendicular lines? We know that perpendicular lines, what happens to their gradients? When we multiply their perpendicular lines, their gradients have to equal minus 1. So that means that, that means that if we have the gradient of OM, which is the light blue line, and we multiply it with the gradient of AB, which in this case is the brownish line, we should get negative 1. So let's get the gradients of these two lines and see what we got. So let's start with the light blue line. The gradient of OB is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, so we know that O is the center of the circle and M is 1 minus 1. So I'm going to let O be point 1. So therefore we've got 1 minus 0 over minus 1 minus 0, which is negative 1. Ah, now let's go for this funny brownish color. 
um, which I chose here. And let's find the gradient of AB. So M of AB is again going to be Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And I've already chosen B to be 0.2 before, so therefore it's going to be 4 minus minus 2 over 2 minus minus 4. 4 divided by minus 2 becomes 4 minus minus 2 becomes 6 divided by 6 which equals 1. Aha! So if we take M of OB and we multiply it with M of AB, do you agree we get minus 1 times our 1 which is negative 1? Ta-da! Therefore M OB, well just therefore OB is perpendicular to AB. Yay! Right, next. Now they ask, determine the equation of the tangent to the circles at points A and B. So what are they saying? They're saying there's a tangent, a straight line touching the circle at point A, what a terrible straight line, and there is another straight line touching the circle at point B. Okay, there's tangent there. And they're asking us to work out the formula, the equation for the tangent at A and the tangent at B. So we know the equation for tangents are y is equal to mx plus c. That's straight line equation. That's it. Now normally we'd say, okay, well, tangents are perpendicular to the radius, so we could use the gradients, but this isn't the radius. This A going through to the center O that is a radius. So this here is going to be perpendicular. So we need to find the gradient of OA. That's the first thing we need to do. So the gradient of OA is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that becomes minus 2 minus 0 over minus 4 minus 0 which equals a half. Therefore, the gradient of the tangent at A is going to be negative 2, which makes sense because it looks like it's a negative graph. Okay, now we've got this point minus 4, 2, so we can find this equation. So the equation of the grade tangent at A is going to be y is equal to negative 2x plus c. But we've got a y and an x, so we can say minus 2 is going to be minus 2 times by minus 4 plus c. So that becomes minus 2, minus 2 times minus 4 is minus, becomes plus 8. So we're going to minus 8 on that side is c. Therefore, our c is going to be negative 10. So the equation of this tangent, the tangent from a, is y is equal to negative 2x minus 10. Now let's look at the equation of, and let's do it in a slightly different color. Uh, let's do it in this color. So now we're doing this one here. Okay, so the gradient again, we need to work out the gradient of OB. So M of OB is equal to, and in this case it's going to be 4 minus 0 over 2 minus 0, which is going to be, 4 minus 0 over 2 is, is going to be 2. Therefore, the gradient, that's that gradient there, of the tangent, okay, of A is going to be negative a half, because remember you just flip it in times of minus, so negative a half. Okay, now we know that that's the tangent and we've got this point 2, 4, so we can say the tangent would be, the equation for that is going to be y is equal to negative a half x plus c, so the y is going to be 4 is equal to minus a half times by 2 plus c, so that becomes 4 is equal to negative 1 plus c, so c is 5. So the tangent at b, the equation for that is y is equal to minus a half x plus 5. Minus a half x plus 5. Right, so now we've got these two equations of the tangents. Let's see what they next ask us. Now they say determine the coordinates of the point c, this point here c, ooh, different color, we're going to do 
purple. Point C, where these two lines meet. Well, that's pretty easy because all we have to do is equate these two lines. So we're going to go minus 2x minus 10 is equal to minus a half x plus 5. Let's bring all the x's to the one side and all the numbers to the other side. So we've got minus 2x plus a half x is equal to 5 plus 10. So therefore we've got, now where did my pen go? Ah, oh, there it is. Minus 2x plus a half, which becomes minus 1.5x, equals 15. That is the same as minus 3 over 2x. So I'm going to times this by minus 2 over 3. And then I have to times this by minus 2 over 3. So therefore, x is going to be the 3's cancel. And that becomes a 5. And that becomes minus 10. So the x value of c is minus 10. Now to find the y value, all we have to do is substitute this minus 10 into either of these equations. I'm going to pick this one on the left just because I can. So therefore y is equal to minus 2 times by minus 10 minus 10. Minus times the minus is a plus, so 2 times 10 is 20 minus 10 which equals 10. So that point there is minus 10 10. And that is where the two tangents meet. Right. Now it says verify that CA equals CB. And that is one of the things that we should know. Right. So now let's prove that CA equals CB. So in order to do this, we need our length formula again. So L is equal to X1 or X2 minus X1 all squared plus y2 minus y1 all squared. So we've got these two points, CA and CB. So let's go for line CA first. The length of CA is going to be the square root of, and I'm choosing the top one here as 1. So it's going to be negative 10 minus minus 4 all squared plus 10 minus minus 2 all squared. So that there becomes the square root of 10, negative 10, plus 4 all squared, plus 10 plus 2 all squared, which becomes the square root of negative 10 plus 4 is negative 6 all squared, plus 12 squared, which equals the square root of 36 plus 144, which equals the square root of 6 and 4 is 10, carry 1, that becomes 8, square root of 180. Now let's do the length of CB. I'm going to do it over here and I'll do it in a different color so we don't get confused. The length of CB. So again, we're going to use the formula of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1. So again, we've got minus 10 minus, um, and this is x, so it's 2 squared plus 10 minus 4 squared, which equals the square root of negative 12 squared plus 6 squared which is the square root of 144 plus 36, which you can see is the square root of 180. Ta-da! So we've verified that CA equals CB. So those two are equal. Right, next. Then right, grade 12, that is it for this question. Now that you've seen it, we can do quite a lot of complicated stuff using the basics of our analytical geometry. I hope you remember this stuff now and can use it appropriately. Please go practice and then do the assessment at the end of the section. Have a great day.